In a world, in a man's world, she's too shrewd, too bold, too much. Listen, sister, this dame knows how to love and she knows how to live. She's strictly on the level, like a flight of stairs. That we're richer for poorer in sickness and in health. I'm sick right now. But does our gal deserve to be in such a jam? Sit back and marvel at the misogyny as we toast the leading lady, disaster to the wench. Like a new man. Today's dollop of disaster is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, starring John Barrymore and Martha Mansfield. Brought to you by our discerning wenches, Nina Berry, Cynthia Levin, Brenda Pontiff, and Beth Simkowski. Disaster to the wench. Welcome to Disaster to the Winch. I'm Brenda Pontiff, and I'm one of the executive producers of this show. And I love old movies. I love watching old movies with strong, bold, dynamic female leads. And I especially like watching these movies with my strong, bold, dynamic friends. But because of the pandemic, I can't do that anymore. In fact, about two months in, uh, I was watching Gilda. And after it was over, I went outside and I had a 20-minute conversation with a squirrel in my backyard because I wanted to talk about sexism and the studio system. Now, this was a very engaged squirrel. I mean, occasionally this squirrel would get distracted by a bird, but it was a pretty good conversation. But I missed my friends and I thought, why am I not using modern technology to watch a movie with my friends? So we're watching this movie together and we're including you, the audience, and we're so glad you're here. So here's to you, and now I'd like for you to meet my fellow wenches. I'm Nina Berry, movie maven and novelist. Hi, I'm Cynthia Levin. I'm a stand-up comic, actress, writer, director, acting teacher, who really just prefers to make fun of other people's work because I will not do my own. Hi, I'm Beth Simkowski. I'm a TV writer who is just really missing the idea of watching shows with my friends and having a glass of wine in the middle of the day. So cheers. So, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, our drinking game today will be any time uh, Dr. Jekyll takes his medicine to turn into Mr. Hyde and transforms, and sometimes he transforms without the medicine, so we'll be drinking at that point too. And I think we should also drink when the actors don't react. <laughs> Period. That'd be so great. I think we'll be very drunk. We'll be sloshed. Loaded. Loaded. <laughs> the reaction-free film, everybody. So this is uh, America's first uh, classic horror film. It is considered, in 1920, it is the first great American horror film. Uh, and here's our star, John Barrymore. Uh, this movie actually made him a big star. Uh, he had been uh, pretty big on stage before this, mostly in romantic comedies, uh, and been in a few movies. But this is the movie that really, and you can see why, he's a good looking man. Um, and, uh, and, and he's a member of the famous Barrymore acting family, Drew Barrymore's grandfather, um, and uh, his siblings, Lionel and Ethel, were also big movie and stage stars. And here he's discovering COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, you can see a lot of his left profile in this uh in this movie and in every movie he made after this he became known later as the great profile um <laughs> he was quite aware he, of his profile yeah yeah he, you see his right profile more often than usual here because he didn't yet have like control as much he wasn't as big of a star yet um but later on i can't wait till that happens to me yeah <laughs> <laughs> What side do you want? I don't know. Is there a side? <laughs> All right, just let me know when I, I just want to control something, please. I personally like the, the, the skull on the desk. Like, <laughs> it's perfect. Very Hamlet. Yeah. And a symbol of things to come. Yeah. I could have done with more lines in this, more dialogue. <laughs> um, I can't, I couldn't follow it. I mean, like, we talked about it. I'm like, I have no idea what happened. And in the whole movie, I was like, I don't know. I'm just kidding, but you know what I mean. A little, little bit more dialogue, a little bit. A couple more sentences. Oh, there's one. We got our first anti vaxxer there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and, and the novella this is based on, um, you don't know about this, the shift between Jekyll and Hyde till the very end. It's more like a mystery. It's more like what's happening with Jekyll and Hyde? Like, who are these men and what, what are they doing? And, and you slowly discover yeah. that, uh, that it's there's more- a problem. It's more the Fight Club kind of thing, where it's something somebody's tormenting him, right? Like that that they don't know who this person is that's tormenting him, and at the very end, you realize. Yeah, that's funny. Mm-hmm. I you know I hadn't thought about it till you said it, but like this is very Fight Club. Yeah, yeah. in a very different sort of way, but yes. Yeah. But without, yeah. There's yeah. Well, I guess it's got a sexy male lead. Uh, yep, that's true. And what movie doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> and the women are all kind of throwaway characters. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I would have thrown any of those women away. You'll see why. You'll see why. He's got some moonshine stills in the back there. The yeah. Side. Making a little Us. moonshine, you think? <laughs> That's what that looks like. Brenda, I love- it's interesting you caught that. <laughs> that caught my mind. <laughs> I'm the only mm. hillbilly of the group, huh? <laughs> Uh, so, so Barrymore was actually rehearsing Richard III while he shot this movie. Um, these were both his first serious roles on stage and screen. And he did Richard III to acclaim on stage, but he only lasted 31 performances. He collapsed from exhaustion um, after that because he was doing both at the same time. Also, he was drinking a lot. Right. Plus, he was having to focus on that left side so much. It's exhausting. <laughs> What's that? Oh, forget it. <laughs> I can only act in this direction. <laughs> I love that they call the clinic basically the human repair shop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is the great, this is a scene where you see everybody just like, is, there was no direction going on. Just people, they're like, just stand there. Don't worry about when the camera's on you. Just be there for hours and hours. <laughs> I mean, these poor bastards. Can you imagine being in this film and they were excited at one point? Can you imagine? <laughs> Wait, they were the reaction. They looked. They looked. Somebody came oh. in. There's like it's just dead people turning their heads. I mean, that's really all. That's it. So tall. Yeah. He's gonna kiss her. Ah! <laughs> Gets in I close. I know. Watching these things during COVID makes me nervous. I mean, watching anything during COVID makes me nervous. But look how close he gets, and why? Is it the breath he was after? <laughs> what, what, what is that? What is that you guess? Yes. Is that Mae Robeson? That actress? No, the Mae Robeson is in the next scene. Oh, the next scene. She will, she will be at the table in the next scene. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, right, yeah. right. Yeah. I like, yeah. I'm okay, but you know, we're setting up some basic, he's a good guy, Dr. Jekyll, even when he's dressed super nice, lets the poor touch him. Yeah. He touches him. Right. Look how close I get to this ugly woman. This is a basically like a saving the cat scene. We get it. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. So yeah. this this woman at the table is Mae Robeson. Oh, who, this is Mae Robeson. Who, uh, born in 1958, uh, became really... 18. 1858. I'm sorry, 1858. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 1858. And uh, becomes really a star in the 1930s. Was nominated for uh, an Academy Award in the 30s for um, Lady for a Day, and was a good friend of Marie Dressler's. Um, her name was actually Robeson or Robison, but it was misspelled in the very first program of the, her debut as an actress. So she just kept it uh, for good luck. <laughs> uh, her father was a sea merchant and is uh, said to have brought goldfish to our country. That's why we have goldfish as pets. So there's a little trivia. And so Clara Barringer is kind of the love interest in this, the, the wholesome love interest. And, you know, she started out with a very interesting background. She went into the theater when she was only 14 years old and then transitioned into foreign films. And um, this, this was kind of the first a big break for her. She'd been in some other movies, but this was the kind of one that put her on the map. And then she starred in films with like Bella Lugosi and R- Valentino, and she was on path for like a huge career. And then in uh, 1923, she was on set in Texas on a movie, and her costume, she was in a, it was in a big hoop skirt. She caught fire mm. and died horribly within a day. Um, and they never knew exactly how she caught fire. It was a big mystery that they, some people thought somebody threw a match into the car where she was sitting, and other people thought she was smoking. 
uh, and it was never resolved as to what exactly set her on fire. Not a horrible. Yeah, there was, yeah. There was apparently a lot of women in the 1800s died from fire because their skirts brushed a candle or something. Two of Oscar Wilde's half sisters died that way oh. at a party. Uh, some party yeah, yeah uh, one Why? caught fire from the candle and the other tried to help her and her dress caught fire uh it's amazing. even and then we continue to wear dresses to yeah. This yeah. Day. <laughs> yeah that didn't teach us anything give me a dress darling where's my yeah. biggest dress where's my hoop i mean <laughs> well we uh, suffer for fashion you know yes, no, no, yeah. we're idiots <laughs> that, that was that was uh, uh millicent was her name um because you i think you mentioned the screenwriter too so the the, the actress was named What's the uh, name? Uh, Martha Mansfield is the actress. Martha Mansfield, okay. Yeah. And, the, and the screenwriter is, uh, what was her name? Clara Berenger. Okay, okay, I got him confused. Yeah, Clara Berenger is the screenwriter. And um, and she was, I mean, it was kind of amazing because the early silent films were a great time for women as writers and directors. Between, I read something that said, like, between 1915 and 1925, more than half of the silent films were written by women. And it wasn't only until uh, later when they became talkies and became much more of a big financial engine, they started pushing women out. And, and some of the earlier films because of that, some of the earlier silence had kind of a subversive, you know, feminist bent to them. And when they got into bigger money, they started pushing that out too. When more cons their, their take on things was considered threatening. It got way more conservative when yeah. sound came in. Yeah. 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 So it's fine, ladies, to get a job as long as it's not, you know, uh, a high earner position. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. Because like, if it's right. you doing it, we're not going to give you any money for it. But if we, yeah. you know, so so it wasn't until the talkies that they needed more money. So then the money people got involved, and then they were like, yeah, well, we're hiring all men. We're not going to risk it with you bitches. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's there's yeah. a book uh, in 1920 that was like essentially called Careers for Women, and it listed screenwriting as a great career for a, a for a woman. Yeah. And directing, okay. too. That's right. Wow. Keep, well, I was going to say, yeah, what a change. Row, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, the director of this piece, John S. Robertson, his wife was a screenwriter. They collaborated a lot. She would have collaborated with him on this uncredited. And she wrote, um, a, her most famous screenplay was Our Dancing Daughters with Joan Crawford, one of our stars that we know about. It made Joan Crawford a star. It was about, like, freewheeling flappers in the 1920s. So... Yeah, a lot of feminism early on that got squashed. Yeah. Although, like, look at this. Like, the women uh, separated. I know. <laughs> I love this. Just uh, sitting around in a room waiting for a man to enter. I know, but it's written by... I find this fascinating. It was written by a woman, and the women have nothing to do, basically. And I don't know where that came from. Um, society. Yeah. Truth? That's exactly what... Isn't that a reflection of society? I mean... Well, in the... No in the novella, there are no women, so at least the women exist here, uh, even mm -hmm. if sadly, but yeah, uh, in the novella, it's all men, all bachelors, uh, and then uh, it was made into a stage play, and they added the love interest aspect, and so the movie, and all movies for Jekyll and Hyde are based more on the stage play than on the novella. Mm -hmm. Boy, they just have the worst parties. Like, I know. It's so <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Again, I would just hate to be an extra in this. I just really, it's already awful now. Can you imagine just sitting there in the dark for days, just <laughs> zero direction, no words to say, don't even, I don't know, the whole thing is so dreary. But I love, I mean, but I love their conversation, you know, the, uh, Sir, Sir George basically saying, aren't you neglecting yourself by taking care of other people? And... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Later gets a job with Fox News and yeah. does very well. <laughs> so is this this is Brandon Hurst, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's the instigator of the whole thing. You know, it's interesting because you look him up and there's so little about him, and it's sort of like all my ex-boyfriends. There's just like nothing. <laughs> can't find him on the internet anywhere, and they did it all on purpose. <laughs> like it's, it's, this trick is pure evil. I know it. Well, it's interesting. He's so good to his daughter, but he's encouraging his daughter's fiance to experiment with evil. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it a test? Is he testing him? He's like, or is he like going, "You're too good to be true. I'm not that good. 
So I'm going to I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to see how really good you are. Do you know what I mean? Because again, the father's always being threatened by the, the the new one that the son, you know, the son-in-law that comes in, right? Like Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, they, that's the competition. So yeah. yeah, let me see how good you really are. And I I believe that that's what it that's what's happening here. But to, you know, and it's actually he is the reason for everything. He's the Yeah. Yeah. But I also I think mean. I mean, we're 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 having the urge to put more subtext into this then they're actually pl they're not playing any subtext like they're not you know <laughs> not i love what you're saying cynthia that's a great reason for a father-in-law to test his son-in-law to make sure he's worthy of his daughter but he just kind of looks like a jerk really yeah <laughs> just no but there's no direction here nobody yeah. directed anybody and i feel like that's the failing of the entire film it's just that there's no direction and that drives me mad because for me in my life i wanted direction so you can imagine if you're on screen and somebody's ever billions of people are going to be watching you you know what I mean, yeah. somebody tell, tell me what to do. People are watching, for God's sake, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah well, the medium it gets. You know, I mean, directors the the that position evolves over the years as yeah. to what the responsibilities are. You're absolutely right, and I still don't accept it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there what there were well directed movies being directed at this time. That just this is not well, as yeah. innovative as the D.W. Griffiths and all of that, who were doing a lot of close ups and moving camera. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But he's he's not doing that here and he was a pretty famous and you know successful director john robertson he did our little girl with shirley temple um and uh but he retired after that um uh, so he, and oh i i looked him up and there's a birds song called old john robertson it was written about him because he lived in a small town near san diego where the birds bassist chris hillman grew up and he was this weird figure frequently seen wearing like a Stetson hat and a white handlebar mustache. And so um, Chris Hillman wrote this song about it. Yeah. I just love that. that Shut your face, you eyes in the stage. I like how <laughs> they wrote it. <laughs> um, I yeah. love this guy. I know, I love this guy. I'm going to start bringing a mallet with me wherever I, I go. Allow me to introduce the Biden. You guys don't? I do everywhere I go. I also, I've been doing that for years. Is that inappropriate? Every nightclub needs a judge. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's how I'd like to host every show, just sitting in the front with a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is um, Nita Naldi, who was, her real name is so much better, by the way. Uh, Mary, oh, now I can't, now I've lost it. But um, it's, a, it's a lovely Irish name. Oh, for fuck's sake, I've lost it completely. I've lost it completely. <laughs> I'm... Yeah, I, mean, I like that this is a strip club, basically. This <laughs> yeah. is, you know, he's got Dr. Jekyll has been tempted by his father-in-law to see if he can handle his baser nature. And so he goes to this crazy place where men have gavels and women <laughs> spin on a stage. <laughs> she doesn't, hurt. I, sorry. She doesn't remove anything. I would have thought she'd take off a veil, but... Yeah, yeah, she does show skin, and I don't know if during that time period that was risque. Like, I remember my grandmother talking about, you know, when she was a girl, you weren't allowed to have earrings. That was considered very trampy, basically. And they wouldn't wear makeup. And they said they'd use Vaseline on their eyelids and on their lips. So I, maybe this was more shocking for the time. Yeah. May have been, yeah. Earrings are trampy, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, but yeah, her, that, her name was uh, Mary Nana Dooley, which is such a great name. Mary, because she, she was Irish, they wanted to make her, you know, uh, seem exotic by giving her a nice Italian name like Naldi, but um, I would have kept Nuni. Yeah. I mean, Mary Nana Dooley. Yeah. Great, Dooley. Great, great name. I'll take her yeah. name. What about, I think I should take her name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have some Dooleys in my family history. Great. It's a great yeah. name. It is a good name. Look at these people just having a good old time. When was the last time you hung out with a man 40 years older than you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, with a nice little baby pool. Couldn't even drink his own drink. <laughs> I mean, the poors are having a much better time than the rich, rich people. Yeah. As far as, you know, like, yeah. this is way more fun. Yeah. Although she is not the world's Poor greatest thing. <laughs> her and her dancing is just my favorite thing. And she was in Zigfield Follies, right? I mean, that's where they found her, in the, as a dancer. <laughs> So she, she can do it if she wants. She's just she's she's basically just swinging like this the entire time. Again, no direction, no steps for this poor thing. I like, mean, yeah, oh. help her out, man. Help a girl. Floundering. Out. Look at her. How's this? How's this? Wax on. Wax off. Wax on. 
<laughs> Even I could have done that role. <laughs> of course, I would have covered my chest. I don't want to hurt anybody's eyeballs. Yeah. But Ooh, he's enthralled. Looking. He's enthralled. He's aroused. <laughs> I like that she's got a very modern looking face compared to most silent movie stars. That yeah. 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 She's got the modern face. What's funny is her doing the lip thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I dance like that too. I do the, <laughs> the white lady's overbite. Yeah, the overbite. <laughs> Harry met Sally. Yeah. I don't know why we're not talking about this poor bastard um, the, the, with, the, with the white hair and the white eyebrows and the white oh! mouth. The yeah. white eye, like lashes. I think that I think that is uh, shoe polish. That's what we we did when we were in college, and we had to play older people. We would use shoe polish on our hair, which I'm sure um, is not good for you. But <laughs> that was a common um, stage tool back then. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because his makeup's so terrible, but the high makeup later on is pretty good. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, they scrimped yeah. on for old age makeup. Yeah. Maybe he just did it himself. And they went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, move over there. <laughs> well, there are a lot of actors that do their own makeup. Like Barrymore did his own makeup. And, you know, Lon Chaney was famous for it. it. Back in the day, maybe that was part of your, you just, you were an actor and you did your own makeup. Yeah, you saved some money. It's the yeah, low budget. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, show up in your, in your veils and in your makeup. I like her eyebrows. She's got actual yeah. eyebrows, not Beautiful. like painted. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's, I mean, it, we are definitely judging her by our standards. And she kind of has yeah. a more natural look that's... yeah. Yeah. And the earrings, man, she's got big earrings. It's trash, a song. Trash, trash. Trashy. Trashy. <laughs> I, she's got a great bod. Like, they certainly are not afraid to show off. She looks fabulous. In that yeah. Beautiful. Look at that smile. It's the most she's smiled in her entire life. <laughs> Is this guy a pimp, you think? The I gavel mean, guy? Of sorts, yeah. The club yeah. owner or the club guy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like a strip club owner. Go make some money. Yeah. Hurry up and bring it back. <gasps> He's got the cash. Look at her. She's how can you do What's she doing? Yo! She's going, yes, yeah, baby. I, I want my son-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I want my son-in-law to get turned on. That's a, no, it's the whole thing. Is yeah, you see, you're not as good as I thought as you as yeah. you as they say you are. Yeah. You're a she, yeah. you're a man. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean no I'm man. Good. And now he's thinking, I must run back to Millicent, who does not uh, excite me at all. Right. The one I'm going to yeah. marry. Yeah. Let me I go really put you on the piano keys. Yeah. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> I love when she has her back to me constantly. Everybody has her back. This is the whole thing with the women. The women have the power when they have their asses to them. Really? <laughs> Very powerful. <laughs> uh, they like to the spoon. Yeah. Oh, well, is that what happens? <laughs> They're going off to a magician's conference, I think. <laughs> I want to do a little sleight of hand before things get out of control. Off to the Comedy Magic Club. Yeah, I love this. I love this card. I love this card so much. For the first time in his life, he wakened his sense of a baser nature. Uh huh. Yeah. Woohoo! Like seriously, like Barrymore was 38 during the movie <laughs> shot this. Like you oh. didn't know that you could get a Woody until you're 38. Like come on. Very slow learner. Yeah. Well, he was surrounded by women, women like that other broad on the piano. So I mean, uh. imagine. Just no, no luck. It's all about the women, right? Always. It's <laughs> always their fault. It's yep. their fault. <laughs> yeah. You're not exciting. You're ruining my life. It's, yeah, it's shot like a stage play. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's like, it's like, I feel like they just took it. Um, How many uh, films prior to this, if anybody knows, were taken from the stage to film prior to this one? I think a lot of them. I don't know for right? sure. Well, yeah. and there was a lot of novels, like um, Little Women, Little Man. You know, all the all the big classic novels were. But the, often, the, often they were included. plays first, and then they. Yeah. Yeah. I do know that in uh, once sound hit, you got an influx of stage actors because right. they knew how to speak. Right. Um, and they got rid of all the silence. A lot because, of them. Yeah. Yeah. Barrymore survived. He made a one of the early sound films called Don Juan, um, which was also produced by Adolf Zucker, our producer here for Paramount. Um, 
And uh, it was a huge, another huge hit. And it had, I don't think it was full dialogue, but it was part sound. Um, and he went on to make, he was a romantic comedy star before this, amazingly. And he went on to make a great comedy called 20th Century, uh, directed by Howard Hawks and Grand Hotel um, in 1932. Yeah. Right, yeah. This, this was made in New York City uh, at the Amsterdam Opera House. Um, so that's a little different. So a lot of these early, early silence were done in New York City before they all came out here. And um, they were building the Astoria studio on Long Island at this point. It wasn't finished yet. So it was actually filmed in a theater. <laughs> so, you know, that Makes probably made it, made it feel more like a stage play too, because we're probably on a stage half the time. Right, right. I just think he's he's totally good looking. I mean, you know, as he gets older, you, you see he aged quickly because I think he was drinking so much. He was, yeah. He aged he much faster than you would have thought, yeah. He started drinking when he was 14. He got kicked out of a bunch of schools for drinking yeah. and for showing up at brothels. Um, unfortunately, his stepmother molested him oh. when he was 15. Oh. So he, that's kind of a tragic backstory. He didn't oh. want to be an actor initially. He wanted to be an artist. And he actually worked as an illustrator for a, for a newspaper for a while, but he was drinking so much and unreliable that they fired him. And his siblings were big stars on the stage, so they got him jobs on stage. And being on stage was more sort of a, well, I can make money this way kind of thing. Um, which My like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so that, and then he became very well recognized. His Hamlet, uh, which took place a couple years after this on stage, was supposed to be quite good. Um, John Gielgud was a big fan and saw um, John Barrymore and Hamlet when he was a kid and he thought he was fantastic. Well, that's a compliment. Yeah. No. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I've been drinking, but I'm going to drink now again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Let us all become Hyde as we drink. <laughs> oh, I love it. This, this is where the drag queens got an idea went, wait a minute. This is a great look. <laughs> I look at him. He's just, he's just a full on drag queen. He really is. It's the silent movie style. Yeah. But his, his hands are so big and his nails seem long and his <laughs> waistcoat is so high. There's just a lot going on here. <laughs> Evil influence. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, it sees the, there's the bad guy. Is that the bad guy's face, like watching yeah. him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like yeah, the father, hearing it in his father in law. Look. Here we go. <laughs> drink up, dude. Drink, drink. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Where are my bosoms? That's smart. <laughs> now, this is transformation he does without makeup. It's pretty, what he does with his face, I mean, obviously there's a lot of twitching as well, but uh, he, he he changes his whole posture and his face without any makeup. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the whole premise of this is kind of nuts in that, so he saw a woman, thought she was hot, <laughs> decided that he couldn't act on the fact that she was hot just as himself. He has to actually, you know, come up with something in his lab so that he could just go after the woman, essentially. Right. That's like, right. a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for those to get to that get slammed thinking. by a hottie. I know. Yeah. Unbelievable. And, and no to the comic Richard Lewis, but he looks a little bit like Richard Lewis here. He, he also <laughs> looks like um, this actor out of uh, Second City. Now, I can't think of his name right in Second City. We know I'm talking about a um, good actor. But, Love. Richard, the poor Richard Lewis watching this, Brenda, you've made him cry. You no, just made him cry. So I'm sure he was a fan before this. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should tweet out to Richard Lewis just to yeah. let him know. Yeah. <laughs> and I do like Richard Lewis, but he. But oh yeah, he's, he's, no, he's great. Something here that reminds me of him. It's the chin. Yeah, it, in the in the novella, Jekyll is both good and bad, and Hyde is pure bad. So there's no, but they made Jekyll pure good here in the movie, and Hyde pure bad. So there's a stronger light dark. But in Stevenson's, it's subtler in that Hyde also Hyde isn't deformed and obviously ugly. He's off-putting to people in a sort of spiritual way in the novel. He's not physically deformed. He's sort of spiritually deformed, and he's smaller and younger than, uh, than Jekyll, um, sort of devolving back to 
you know, your id stage, I guess. But uh, but yeah, the, it's very different here with Jekyll being so pure. Right. It would involve subtlety. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it, for him to, to, to portray darkness without looking any different, you know what I mean? But a spiritual darkness. There needs to be some dialogue, I guess. And then, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, and no, you're right. Of acting. And so those two things removed. So now we do, you've got to do physicality, you know? It's, it's way more yeah. sensational and visual with him being so hideous. Yeah. 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 Who's saying the, in the highly revered Abbott and Costello meet Dr. <laughs> Mr. Hyde, which is a classic, um, it's uh, Boris Karloff plays Dr. Jekyll, and he's so horrible as Dr. Jekyll that you're like, what's the point of becoming Mr. Hyde? You're so, <laughs> that's the meanest Dr. Jekyll I've ever seen. Because <laughs> I was, was watching the one last night with Frederick March, and he's he's more like this. He's a really good Dr. Jekyll. They call it Dr. Jekyll. Cheers. No, oh, cheers. <laughs> Here he goes again. Yeah. yeah. And I like that he's conscious enough. I feel like we've kind of gone into the more recent versions are kind of nutty professor-ish, where the person doesn't know. They don't have control over the transformation, whereas he's just like, okay, I'm done being bad. Time to take a little drink. Go back to my old life. Exactly. Yeah. I love that choice. That he yeah. <laughs> the question is, does that absolve you of the evil you do? You know that you're going right. to be it, evil. Right. It, it seems to me like it's it's making it so much worse that you're doing those things. If you're doing it, you're taking a, a drug that makes you bad, knowing full well. And you can remember, you know, what you've done. So what's kind of the point of it? Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I've known a lot of comics that swear that they have to smoke weed to write jokes. And <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, that's yeah. that, which is ridiculous, I think. But, you know, people say, oh, I got to, you know, I, I, kind of an excuse. Right. Right. You know, yep. the other thing is, it's like it's, you know, when somebody has like a, a split personality, right? And then that becomes their, like, their, it happens for a reason, though. It's because of abuse or whatever, you know, trauma, and they become right. split. And then one of the, one of the, their selves does something that is horrible, where the other self doesn't remember any of it, yeah. right? Um, and, uh, and it's, I mean, there's, and there is truth to that, but he's doing it intentionally. He's right. Saying, I mean, so, I mean. So this thing, he's a bad person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically, in, in this version, it's a hall pass. You know, yeah. it's yeah. like I'm gonna. I really want to go to that dance hall with that crazy, yeah. crazy, yeah. sexy woman. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna drink something first. Right. And, it's and then I can fault. do whatever I want. Completely. And it's not my fault because it was suggested to me. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. The evil recommendation from somebody. Right. challenge in a sense. I have to take it. Yeah, and he's even, in this scene, he's even setting up so that Hyde has financial access. Like, so so he's completely setting himself up to do whatever he wants in right. the other persona. And do you see how he's standing now? Listen, he's like leaning. <laughs> oh, darling. So listen. casual. Yeah, yeah. He's so relaxed now that he's been getting slammed on every evening. Ah, uh, yeah. Look at that eye makeup. It's very flock of seagulls. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they got it from. <laughs> the left profile. Yeah. You have to see Stan Laurel in uh, Dr. Pickle and Mr. Pride. <laughs> the transformation is hilarious. And it's a direct, it was made in 1925. It's a direct parody of this movie. Oh, great. And he looks a little bit, he, his, he, he looks like the high transformation. But he, in his transformation, it's legs only. It's like below the waist. Yeah. Legs wobble, he can't stand up straight. It's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. I highly recommend it. I love it. Right. Oh, so, and so so now Hyde is getting now he's getting a little love nest set up for Hyde. Mm -hmm. Um a tear. A little yeah. secret yeah. Secret yeah. evil lair. Yeah. 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 He's creating a whole separate life for this for himself. Yeah. <laughs> now this but, woman um, this is Julia Hurley, and she was born in 1848. So she was alive during the Civil War and old enough to remember it. Um, she died seven years after this movie. She was born in um, Greenwich Village, New York, really trained stage actor, did a lot of stage work. And when movies came out, she was kind of like, what's the point? I don't get it. All this pantomime and all. But then she began, she got to where she liked it because she liked seeing the playback. You know, which, when you're in the play, you can't see yourself. And she, this is cool, you can see yourself. And she also said that she thought the people in the screen industry were nicer than the people in the stage industry. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. 
Interesting. Wait, and you're saying wait, so you're saying there's an actor who wanted to be the center of attention and see what she looked like on screen? <laughs> All right, I don't believe it. I can't believe that. I played um, Aunt March in the 1918 version of uh, The Silent Little Women. So she, you know, she worked. She worked a lot. Yeah, she's. I like her the most in, of every character. I feel like she's the most interesting to watch on screen. Mostly because yeah. she's nuts. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, she smiles through everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it's matter what's going face. on. Dad? I love her face. Yeah, she's got yeah. a great face. I love his face too. He looks like he's been in a couple of boxing matches. Yeah. Judge. <laughs> Holy crow, the, the whatever he is. I also love the choice that, that Hyde has a round hat and everybody else has a classic top hat. <laughs> he's deformed and everything. He's deformed. Even his hat is deformed. <laughs> It's so yeah, unattractive. He, he could afford a nicer place too. In other movies, the Petitaire is a nicer apartment. In this one, he's cheap. <laughs> yeah, in the other movies, like in the Frederick March one, I have, actually have trouble watching some of the violence against women in that. Like, it's, yeah. he's much more violent. You see, you see the implications of his relationships with the women yes. like more vividly. And yes. it's, uh, whereas here, they're they've scaled it back a little. It's still quiet. disturbing. Yeah, but, but yeah. not, you don't see it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it, and in the novella, people have interpreted it that there are no women, as I said in the novella, it's a bunch of bachelors. And so one of the evils, supposedly, maybe, that Hyde is indulging in is homosexual activity. So there's a gay subtext, um, perhaps, to the novella, because that was in Victorian times seen as so deviant or whatever, which is really. Yeah. Yeah. ridiculous but it, it seems to me the same here i mean he seems to be just trying women you know what i mean i think he's just gay it seems to me he's a gay man just trying this and now he has to be another man to do that he has to become another person to do that that is oh. that is exactly what the one of the interpretations of the novella too is like well i can't really be successful with women yeah. as jekyll or jekyll so i now have to take a potion to be yeah uh -huh. or i'm not allowed to be with men Right, or, or you, know, right. Men, you know, so that's what I'm saying. So I'm gonna take a potion and I'll try this out, you know, because there's right. so much. Um, right. What's the word? Just like you know, a, a hatred, venom towards Shame. women. There's yeah. a real. Uh, what's the word? yeah? Yeah, just a, just a real, but like there's disdain for yes. women for, from him uh, in every scene. Mm -hmm. And this is a, this is a huge setup, you know, that she's establishing. She has this ring that you can put poison in. Right. I love this little. Italian vignette. <laughs> yeah. This is what you do when you have poison in your ring. Yeah. You die very dramatically. Yeah. 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 Give me that goddamn thing. Yeah. Give me yeah. love, such sweetness, such tenderness. There's no other way to dis dispense poison. I need this ring. Yeah. 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 There's no. Other I'm way. a scientist, <laughs> but. Yes, yes. Somebody explain the juggler. Well, he's basically, he's, he's the interim guy. He's like, where's the next act? I can only do this so long. <laughs> Good God, I'm going back. I don't give a shit. But only three balls? Like, they got the worst juggler. He's just like, oh, yeah. my God, I am. Just well, cut, to the, cut to the juggler. Yeah. <laughs> Go for the juggler. Wait, no, I said the jugular, not the, ju the juggler. <laughs> Uh oh, there's competition. Yeah, he's so dynamic. I can't stand it. Oh, hell. How's she gonna choose? How's she ever gonna pick? <laughs> oh yeah. John Barrymore of this guy. Yeah. yeah. Look at the, look at his hair. What is up? God, can you? He's like a dog. He's like. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop staring at you until you give me some food. <laughs> he doesn't have the profile either. Jeez, Louise. It's full of energy, oh, easy, Bella. <laughs> full of energy. <laughs> How is she ever gonna pick? But I mean, honestly, it's like they're both so dull to her. Yeah. So yeah. is she though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's it's the most stereotypical, two-dimensional, like Madonna whore thing going on here. Yeah. I mean, it could be performed by a paper doll, and we get the same exact effect. <laughs> but, you know what? I want to see that version where there's just a mannequin that they use for the woman. <laughs> <laughs> And it wouldn't really change that much. They could have done it. One would have earrings, the other wouldn't. That'd be yeah. it. 
leaving all the money to Hyde. That's right, there it is. Edward Hyde. E D W A R D. Anybody remember that? Take on that show? <laughs> That's a big, big piece of paper. Yeah, big sticky. Yeah. And I love that they give him the time to read it, the whole thing. He takes yeah. like, like seven minutes of screen time for him to like peruse. I mean, look at him. <laughs> Like, hang on a second, I'm not through it yet. Well, yeah. Oh, you're distracting me. Oh, the hell with it. Forget it, forget it. Whatever, whatever, what I'll shine here. Give it to me. Well, you know, the placards on, on silent movies do take a long time, and I assume it's because the audience, some of them were probably not great readers at this point in time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True story. Yeah. 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 I also wonder. When is this supposed to be set? So the movie's from 1920. Mm -hmm. is, what year is this supposed to be set? Late 1800s? Yeah. yeah. The novella oh, when paper was big and pens were feathers, you know? Yeah. 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 1886 or 85 was the novella, so it's yeah, yeah. supposed to be prime Victorian era. Mm -hmm. Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> I have forgotten her. Wait a minute, exactly. Ugh. You mean that woman in the parlor? She's always <laughs> tinkling the ivories? <laughs> she doesn't see it. All right, I know, I know. All right, I'll get back to it. And it's up to the women to influence the man and make him good again, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They make him bad, they make him good. They, it's, all, it's all their fault, whatever it is. Victims of Deeper his into his vice, so we know that now he's had a couple of gentlemen. She's like moved in with him or something. She's in that. She's in. She's in the the, the little love pad. Oh, right. She's his yeah. mistress. Right. Yeah. She's. I love that little bit of business they gave her to do. Just, 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 just push on something. Whatever. That <laughs> touch just the clothing. Touch it. Just touch it. Touch it. Keep touching it and touch it. Keep touching, touch, 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 until he, yes. Get out, I'm through with you. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, all right. Oh. Can I get you a note know. something? <laughs> <laughs> I left my bubble bath in the, never mind. <laughs> all right, I was packed anyway. <laughs> I know, that's what she was, she was doing that. She has such intuition. She had a feeling he was coming back to tell her, to get out. I'm through with you. The, uh, the critics initially really liked this. And then mm -hmm. as more people began to see it, some of the critics started warning the audience that they didn't think pregnant women should see this because it was too disturbing for pregnant women. Which part? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His, yeah I mean, the, the Mr. Hyde character was so outrageous that it might make pregnant women, um, you know, I guess give birth early or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, because okay. it can happen. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a person growing inside me, but like I can't handle his makeup. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So here she is on the piano in her, in her promise bracelets. <laughs> the little tie. <laughs> like, oh, stop. I know. He's like, God, the song. I wish you would learn more than one song. <laughs> He's mad at the music that the uh, that the organist is playing in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her again, though. Here's the situation where the back it's constantly the the female's back is always to the male, and they just it's it's just like is it, it's a waiting thing. It's a waiting thing. They just keep waiting to be, you know, taken or something. But then they're not. And then they're just gotta go. God damn it! I put my back to you and everything. All right, now what is it? What do I do? What do I have to do? She's wearing more daring, like, off-the-shoulder thing here. Yeah. 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 She senses something's going on. Yeah, she's trying to, like, please marry me. Hurry up. I wish that was all it took to get a man to notice me. Look, I've changed. <laughs> I've got shoulders. <laughs> You've been doing this. I'm not worthy. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> the body of a 14 year old boy doesn't that turn you on <laughs> <laughs> throw me into the fire i'm giving you a great chance right now yeah <sighs> your dress will get oh poor woman oh 
my God, I, you do like me. He's gonna try. He's gonna try to be straight. That's right. Do you have a nice nose? And small. Well, your lips are also small. I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> just <a little> kiss. <laughs> For some time, Doctor Jekyll renounced the dark and dumb senses of height until a night and an hour of weakness. A demon long cage burst forth more malignant than before. <laughs> <laughs> and still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how much has changed. Like horror is still a huge genre. But this like this was terrifying to people back in nineteen twenty. Nowadays things are so much more extreme. But it has moments that really do, do bother me. No, I mean, I don't feel it, it causes me to not feel a whole lot because it's so absurd. Maybe it's just just a maybe I it's just a I think it's the conventions of our time that change so much that this just is hard to connect yeah. to a modern. Yeah. Like and there's how no the, how suspense. I'm sorry. Uh, that's quite right. Yeah, you're right. There's no suspense. And it's how things are shot. It's that it's not shot, and you're right, directed. So it, it, you just aren't responding to it in the way that they had different ideas of what a movie was. In it. Right. There's just no emotion. You know, they felt like, well, maybe if we just put you in front of the camera, you know what I mean? And you, you, this is what's happening, you know, but there's no emotion behind it, I feel. Like, for the most part, there's just everything's very shut down. Or or very showy, right? Real obvious. One, like, yeah, big one, gestures. Yeah, but, exactly. Which also, but there's no feeling in that, though, either. Right, you know, yeah. I'm just talking about actual emotion. Yeah, it feels like a, yeah. The remnants of the Del Sarte acting system from the 1800s or you see in the early 1900s here. Yeah. This woman's great. I love her. Yeah. She has life. She's happy. Yeah. He looks good and creepy there, I think. Yeah. It's creepy. I think it's Del Arte, isn't it? The, uh, Del Sarte. Del Sarte? That's yeah. different from Del Arte? Yeah, it's different okay. from Commedia Del Arte, yeah. It's Del okay, Sarte. Got it. Oh, okay, great. Del Sarte method. Got it. Oh, red ants, black ants, something's crawling on me. So this, yeah, well, this is so this is an opium den essentially. It's you know, implied, right? This is right, the drug everybody's kind of going through withdrawal. Descended to take advantage of the addicts, basically. <clears throat> Good old Hyde. Yeah, um, our producer, by the way, Adolf Zucker, was one of the founders of Paramount Pictures. Um, started off as famous players and then famous players Lasky, and then they created, he created Paramount. Ooh, oh, hey! Yeah. Me. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just caned you. Let's go. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I did it again. What are you going to do about it? Fucking men in I've a got bar. my back to you. What else do you want? <laughs> this is not the only has, direction I've gone. Not much has changed, really. Like, you go to a bar and... Really? I need to get out to a bar, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> oh. I want somebody's man's long nails to be scraping against my throat. Ugh. <laughs> Here's the old girlfriend. Yeah. Hello. Remember me? Yeah, the, um, this is what you, what happens. This is the uh, 4 a.m. crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's. <gasps> she looks blind. Look at her. I thought she was. I thought it was just some blind woman coming in, going, "Are you a male?" <laughs> and she's got the dark shadows under her cheeks, so she's on hard times, falling on hard times. Yeah. Things were going so well before. Oh, oh, hey. This is the most absurd. Well, I mean, seriously, this would cause me to have my baby right now. If that's <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, just throwing them down on their knees. Look at you. Look at you. You know what he's doing. He's saying, yeah. you know, I want the pretty young one. I've already used this one up. So I want the fresh. Yeah, one. look at yourself. You, you've gotten too ugly, even for yeah. me. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. And then the fact that they just stand, they just stare this. for the, for ages. There's no direction. Ladies, just don't move for a really long time. Look at him. 
his head, head has gotten head. weirder. Yeah, cone heads. Cone head. The original head. cone head. Yeah, exactly. Did he have a cone head? No, <laughs> seriously, did he? I swear to God, when he took off his hat, he had a. Are you all right, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to keep he gets more grotesque as we go along. Is it like Jekyll's more in control and then as Hyde becomes more in control, yeah. he gets weirder and weirder looking. Look at this guy's nose. I mean, this is another guy with an interesting nose. Like, remember the, the so the judge, the, 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 yeah. the, yeah. actually the head of the bar, the owner of the bar, and these flat, these smashed in noses. Was boxing big in this day? I, I wondered if maybe if it was filmed in 1920, you just had World War One. There, there were a lot of injuries. I wonder. Think noses? I was thinking syphilis. I, you know. Ooh. That happened. Could to be. Noses. They lost noses. For they me. lost the like they lost body parts and stuff. Um, right. And then they were like, I want to be an actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would hot you. There was Todd uh, Haynes. There was a movie called Freaks. Oh yeah. Shot at the time. Like you, you, you could find people that had. Yeah. You know, disabilities or... Right. It makes sense because if it's all just a visual genre, Mm -hmm. right, then then they're going to, or medium, whatever you want to call it, then they're going to be looking for just odd-looking faces like they're they're doing now. Well, and ugliness equals evil, right, which I've always had an issue with. I'm like, I'm sorry, evil often is quite pretty. But, like, yeah, that there's an equation of degradation. Oh, yeah. The Wicked yeah. Witch with the big nose, I always associated my sister with her. <laughs> Before the nose job, I'm sorry, but you see what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. that's not my fault. <laughs> Just his hands on her chest, and now he's, like, biting her neck like a vampire. And, yeah. Very vampire Yeah. Into the life of Millicent, the shadow of evil now began. Now, and I wonder, is this because, you know, when she kissed him, did that open up some sort of door to other stuff? I know because they don't show anything for her doing anything more. Right. So what does that what mean? It doesn't mean any, to me. It means not look at her. She's just dark. She's just dreary. Even <laughs> more dreary than before. I won't even play the piano. I won't. <laughs> no. I'm not even gonna. Well, I will stand up. But still. <laughs> <laughs> look at her, now. She's got her back to him. And I know it's that whole thing about having them both on camera. They're both faces. But like. There's also something really fucked up about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> look at her. Yes, yeah, look well, at us. Just keep looking out, looking out. Don't look at him. Look at us. Look at us. That's the thing. Like, she doesn't ever look at anyone. She's always looking off into the distance. Yeah. I guess that's supposed to mean she's, like, pure or something. It's just so No, it's the same thing putting. that uh, Jekyll is doing. He doesn't look at anybody either. It's every, That's the acting style. It was just right. looking off. Off. Yeah. Off. Don't look into each other's eyes. It's really wild. But this is the other thing that she does, which I love, is that she's constantly throwing her hands on everybody's lapels. It's just like, it's her <laughs> only... She's going to do it just, just, just sort of the whole movie. Where am I? Where am I? Well, whose lapels do I put them on? There's no... There they are. Hello. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're... There we go. There's my lapel. Uh. <laughs> Daddy's little girl. I guess Dad has been able to balance good and evil somehow. Well, he doesn't take a he doesn't take a drug in a, in a laboratory. <laughs> I mean, don't do drugs, kids. That's right. what it's all about. That's the right. of the story. Is it a meth lab, really, that Jekyll has? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Hello, is anyone there? This is where they got the idea for Breaking Bad. Right. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go close, me too. Anyway, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Whose hat is bigger? <laughs> My hat is bigger than your hat. Poor pool. You know, they talked about him, the, the one servant or whatever he is. He says, you're, you know, your master's been out of town or something. That he said that it said in the beginning that he kind of like was grandfathered into this role of him being his master. For some reason, they put that in the story. Mm-hmm. That was one of the lines uh, early on in the film. Yeah. They were talking but, about, they said that he was grandfather, of, you know, using so many, you know, that, that his, he, he inherited you know, him he from his dad. Inherited. Like, he's a family, he's a family servant. He's an old-time exactly. family servant. He inherited. So he inherited his master, is what they, the way they said it. Yeah. 
uh, that's that, yeah, I served your father. I guess they're trying to give Cool some background for some reason. Uh -huh, like, exactly. It was just one sentence and everything. Yeah. Else. Like, he's just not, just a non being. Okay, this is just unbelievable. This is, this scene coming up is shocking, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it absolutely is. So, to me, I was worried about that little boy with the broom up his crotch, and then this happens. He's rooting for it. It's like the, the little young bad boy and the older bad man. That's just creepy. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. And they, Basically, just murders a child because he wants Damn to. Damn interference. Yeah. What business is it of yours? Um, <laughs> because you're a murderer? Yeah. And, and also, I'm a little disturbed at the other kid's reaction to it. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's something. It was almost like he's a young, you know, high. Uh, you Psychopath. Know. He's a young... Yeah. Psychopath. It's the evil in the world. Yeah, showing. Yeah, and he, he can buy them off, basically. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. I think yeah. in the novella, he pays them a hundred quid yeah. to... Uh, in the uh, in the Doctor uh, Pickle Mr. Pride Stan Laurel version, <laughs> all he does is steals ice cream from the kid. <laughs> I like that version better. <laughs> and he had to pay them off. All right, here's a hundred quid. All right, cool. Stealing stealing ice cream is also pure evil. So yeah, yeah. fair enough. But it's hard, easier to take when you're watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But if you're gonna steal it, eat it fast because it will melt. So. <laughs> I'm sure they had. I'm sure they had a meeting about how do we do this? How do we make a parody of this? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I know, yeah, the, the thing to do: steal the ice cream. Yeah, without disturbing the pregnant ladies. Yeah. Right, right, right. Here, I wrote a check for you. Yeah, exactly. I'm okay, mad so about it, but I'll take it. It's an IOU. <laughs> signed by Jekyll. Ooh. Dun dun ah. dun. That is very Jekyll's. So in the novella. Yeah. In the novella, they don't know what's going on, and so they're investigating, and they think that Hyde is is uh, blackmailing Jekyll, and get, that's why Jekyll's paying all his bills, and that's why he's in Jekyll's will. Right. That Hyde has something over Jekyll, which I right. think he kind of does, but yeah. Right. Which which is an interesting, much more sophisticated kind of plot than this. 100%. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. just not as interesting because you don't see the transformation till the very end. So here. They wanted to show you the cool transformation back and forth. More of a horror movie. Yeah. yeah. The monster. Yeah. Yeah. The novella is much more sort of supernatural, creepy, uncanny, as opposed to horrific. Hmm. Hmm. Only hmm. waiting. Hmm. Or Millicent. I mean, people can get away with so many bad things in those days because of no social media, no cameras, no <laughs> microphones. Especially you know? if you're rich. No. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. You just get away with stuff for, for ages. I mean, serial killers went on for decades, didn't they? <laughs> it's like murdered for ages. I mean, of course, we're still doing it today. But... Yeah. Uh, and I, think I love this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say I love that this is now Jekyll's concern because it's gonna hurt his own life. Um, yeah. He's having remorse not for what he did, but because it's starting to get, it's starting to affect him, his right. regular, his good right. side. Right, right. I had a good reputation before you. You mean before <laughs> me? Uh. Where I did this to myself? Yeah. I'm pacing. Yeah. <laughs> In my dressing gown. Yeah. Hey, Perfectly put together. No idea what they're talking about at all. Uh-huh. I see. Okay. All right. Uh-huh. Goodbye. So he's just, like, trying not to go outside, I guess. Yeah. This is yeah. him yeah. fighting the urge to go out and do the bad things. But is it that he had run out of... Is he has not run out of medicine yet? Is that what... I don't not think yet. so, not yet. Not yet. He's just trying not to be yet. good. He's just trying to be good. Just all on his own accord. Who is it? <laughs> Got a lot of bad shifts on buttoning my blouse. Yes? <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> you look terrific. Well, thank you. <laughs> he does it. <laughs> Imagine walking around like that all the time. Yeah.
<laughs> so our producer Adolf Zucker was also one of the people who um, created vertical integration in Hollywood, which is means you own production, distribution, and exhibition. So we owned the studio, distributor, and the theaters, and it was the beginning of the huge studio era. He created that business model, which eventually had to be broken up by the government as a monopoly. So, and the game board monopoly came right after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, is he, uh, was he from Germany or is he American? Because Zucker he... was, uh, I think, originally from Hungary. Um, he came here when he was a kid and yeah. he became so a... He was a very successful businessman before he went into movies. Thank God I mean, he then came he started... here before the war, though. You know? Yes, absolutely. He was here before the war. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he is responsible for the creation of the movie studios, really, as they existed through the 30s and 40s. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Wait, he's not drinking, but I think we should drink. Ooh. Yeah. He's, tra yeah. He's, tra he's transforming. That was a great transformation. Wait a minute. Oh, oh my God. Can you imagine observing? I mean, I've seen it. <laughs> Didn't I party with you down at the club? Oh my God. <laughs> He's even more hideous. Yeah, the makeup's right. gotten good there. That's right. He recognizes him from, from the 4 a.m. at the. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Don't you Ugh. touch me. So this is another, the most disgusting scene. This is the second the hard to watch. This is a, this is, I think, a, I think this is pretty rough for yeah. 1920. Uh, it is. And these are not stuntmen. These are. Yeah. 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 And this on is the stage. Party. He bites him on the neck. Yeah. yeah. And that face again. Yeah. God. He's getting, this is the ugliest he's been, I guess, yet. Yep. He gets worse and worse. Oh. Servants are like, what the hell? You hear something? I'll just stay inside, everybody. Who wants <laughs> soup? <laughs> yeah, he's sickening. Well, he's sickening. for good measure. Yeah. Very effective there. All I right, let's go now. I think he stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Let's go see what's happened. What's <laughs> <That's laughs> happened? <laughs> oh, God. It's a fucking story of my life. All right. But really, it's kind of interesting that he kills the person who encouraged him to do this whole horrible thing in the beginning. The, the mm -hmm. cause of it all, really. The root of it all. Well, right. But also an excuse. Like, that's that's the justification for this, you know, aggressive murder. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. the father of his, his fiance. But it is ironic that the guy who started it dies by the hand of it. Yeah, 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 that feels a little bit like they feel like it's justice. I mean, like there's some justice to it, I guess. Come up, Vince. Yeah. Still horrible. Yeah. And depending on what score, uh, you know, the, the musical score has been redone a million times by people who wanted to keep improving on it. Of course, this would have been an organ or a piano, but depending on what score um, you're using under this, the original, it's hard to find who did the original. Yeah. But um, the the one that we have used uh, doesn't quite the tone doesn't quite match. <laughs> yeah, it's... along with this, so no, yeah. this music is horrible and relentless, um, and <laughs> this entire movie it's just tragic. Yeah, I can't help feeling live. It would be better if you had an organist reacting to the movie and able mm -hmm. to. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Again, was... emotion. We're lacking emotion. So there's yeah, the music would help a lot. The music. There's you know if there's a, if these people were alive, it'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, let me put my cape on. There's been a murder. Give me five more minutes. It takes a while. This damn thing is hard to link. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Mr. Hyde. Can you imagine? There's a murder. Give me my coat, my cloak, my hat, my paint. <laughs> my gloves. <laughs> my gloves. My walking stick. My notebook. <laughs> Is my Isn't collar all right? Now let's go out there and get him. <laughs> <laughs> and the cops are very formal too. I know, it's amazing. I mean, imagine how long it took them to get dressed. You get to tell her. Yeah. No, you tell her. No, you tell her. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe now she'll emote. 
Yeah. He looks like a gorilla here to me. The, the, yeah, they give it a big, like, yeah, yeah, silver back kind of skull. Yeah. Thing. So wild. I did feel though that this movie would have been so much better and more entertaining if it was at like you know five times the speed. You know. <laughs> yeah. Like just I just like. I feel like that's the reason why silent movies were so fast is because there was no words, you know? <laughs> we could move it along. Here's something sort of in between. There's like, you know, there's a little bit of sparse dialogue and it's really slow, you know? So it's just, it really slows this down, which is why we're talking so fucking much. <laughs> so much time. To well, you could that. argue that that's why the silent movie is the perfect medium for the slapstick comedy, the physical comedy, because they they do the undercranking and you've got the physical, and it works so well. It still works well. All the Chapman yeah. films and the Chapman films, and yeah, it's beautiful. I've always wanted to be in a silent movie. Just. Did you ever see Mel Brooks' <laughs> silent movie? Yeah, it it spoofs yeah. a lot of the 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 sped up conventions and all of that, but. Thematically, the novella has a lot of silence in it. People don't talk about stuff. There's a lot of pressure to not report things and all this. So I feel like silence is a is an effective thematic thing going on here. But yeah, it's it's a little slow at times. Yeah, I'd say it's slow. I love this woman. Look at her. She's so excited. Uh, Something wrong with Hyde? I mean, seriously, have she ever been? She loves she loves drama, which is why she she owns. She rents out these shitholes. I think she likes the company. I think she's lonely and she wants to chat with Oh, no. I just, and, 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 you know, this is pre, you know, soap operas. What else is she going to do with her day? She's going to create the drama. I mean, she's, oh, wait, she's something's going. Yeah. Looking great. for murderers to rent to. Like. <laughs> <laughs> the seedier, the better. Look into your mess, get in there. I don't care what you pay. Do something horrible, though. My life sucks. I think this this mink stall oh, is from the go. 1920s and not from the late 1800s. Yeah. So here she just found out, right? And she's just fallen to the floor. She's never shed one tear, Millicent. Yeah, you wouldn't want to ruin, run your your makeup. Right. So you you make the gesture rather than the action. Yeah. You just, you just throw yourself down. Her father's body. Mm -hmm. Yep. There she is. Grabbing some other, anything she can put her hands on. Oh my god, one less lapel to touch. Uh huh, yeah, no, yeah, 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 he came in here, yeah, he was a, no, a lovely fella, lovely, well, not very attractive, but you know, I mean, I wouldn't do him, but anyway, where were we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you boys come back, you see, uh, <laughs> this is fantastic, this is the best day of my life, bye bye! <laughs> She's now my favorite. <laughs> yeah, she amazing. really is. She's just amazing. I love that walk up. These young cops. Yeah. 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 We'll get her. In it. Yeah. And that's my favorite thing is that there's three cops in the entire whole of London. I mean, it's just like, you know. That's because that's the it. others are looking for Jack the Ripper right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody split it up. You get Jack, we'll get this. We'll yeah. get Jack. <laughs> So the the woman who wrote this, uh, Clara Barringer, went on to be one of the people who founded the USC School of Cinema and taught there for, you know, taught screenwriting there for like 30 years until she died. So she was a master, considered a master. Um, wow. Listen, anybody who, any woman who can accomplish anything is a master in my mind. You have to be, yeah. yeah. I found a, the School of Television on USC, that's up. amazing. Yeah, she's yeah. one of the one of the originals with uh, Douglas yeah. Fairbanks and the others. Oh sure. Now Hyde is using Jekyll as a cover for him, whereas Jekyll used to use a Hyde as a cover for his activities. It's like the power balance is done. <laughs> oh. So tired. What did I do? <laughs> Oh, and I forgot to, like, invest in growth stocks today and take out my value cyclical. <laughs> Darn it. Oh, my God, look at her. I'm going to faint. I had some bad news. Someone catch me, please. <laughs> mm. 
So it's not really clear from this, but one of the things I read talked about that, you know, at this point, Jekyll is concerned because he knows he can convert over to Hyde at any time. So he's worried if people see him and he, they're chasing him or essentially accusing him of something, he could out himself by becoming Hyde. Right. And then kill them. <laughs> yeah. Or just get arrested because now they're looking for Hyde for the murder. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hyde, like Hyde starts manifesting without potion. And so he's in big trouble. Manifesting without potion. That sounds like the name of a novel. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> My next novel. My next novel will be Manifesting without potion. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> <Nope. laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, it's just you. Yeah. I was just going to say, you guys don't mind if I come over. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ah, ah, ah. Lapel, lapel, lapel. Lapel, lapel, lapel. Lapel, lapel. Oh. So sad. Uh, this is like Victorian CSI. You just stand around the body a lot. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm. Oh God, I have to. So she's still here. <laughs> I have a penis or I don't. Oh my God. <laughs> Make your lower lip tremble. Yeah. And then you'll be sad. Look at him. He's so. Here bad. I am. Hello. Hello. I'm over here. Here, under, under you, right here. <laughs> you must help me find him. Yes, I'm, I'm still here, but that's okay. You can talk to whatever, whatever you want. My hair, the wall behind me. I'm just so glad you're touching me. Yes, that's a firm that you're choking. You're chuck, chuck, chuck. Ah, ha, 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 ha. All right. Yeah, he's going to go after that murder the way O.J. went after his wife's murder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Same strategy. I'll take care of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Now the hours of the God of the nature to the hideous revenge and out of the black abyss of torment sent upon him the creeping core that something. <laughs> this, I feel like, is a pretty effective scene. Like the, yes. The effects are, you know. Yeah, great. Great. Pretty good. The, the drag queen just waking up to himself. <laughs> oh my god, what did I do last night? Creepy. Well, here comes what was on my window yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love this. Like, this to me yeah. is the scariest moment in the whole thing. It is, and it's also very sexual, isn't it? He's just like yes. taking it, you know? It feels like. I, I mean, to me, it looks like a scorpion, but I guess like a spider close up would look like that. Yeah. Combo of both. I mean, it's just yeah. a weird thing. It's got Hyde's face. Yeah. Like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His face is in the scorpion. It's yeah. So I mean, wild. One. Ugh. I, would, I do like the bed. <laughs> it's It's... Down Renovation hardware, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Restoration hardware. The Hyde Restoration. collection. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Well, thank God I got my nails done. <laughs> In despair, medicine to me, to Dr. Lanyon. Put my back to you and we'll talk. <laughs> this is the rational guy, supposedly, right? Yeah. At the very beginning, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Conservative versus progressive. The progressive Jekyll, of course, becomes horrible. So progressive bad. <laughs> He's ghosted you. He doesn't love you. He's just not that into you. <laughs> Do you have any lapels I can? Oh, you do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Just like. When your life what is do I do? Just grab his lapels, bitch. For God's sake, let's get on with the filming. Go on from us. <laughs> Having exhausted the supply of the essential drug, which all alone could ensure even a temporary hold upon the better self, Jack. I like our little broken <laughs> bottle. To our too. illustration. I love it. So we 
don't know if he's tired or no, we still missing. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, wait a minute. I'm out. Oh, for fuck's sake, how can I get late without? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? Is this the original incel here? This guy? Yeah. Supply chain issues, you know? <laughs> I, lo I love it. They're just figuring this out. There's something wrong with the master. Yeah. Well, as long as they don't ask us to work, we're fine. Exactly. Let's go fuck yeah. around in the other room. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and one guy has like four or five servants. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, he does a lot of good for society. He needs them. Oh, Although lately, we know he's cheap. Remember that pet -a He doesn't want to spend money on anything. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Richard Lewis is, this is where this <laughs> came from. Took him forever to get there. <laughs> like, Basically in the backyard. I mean <laughs> That's how I react anytime somebody knocks on my door. What is it? Who is there? about to shift oh no <laughs> feels very sort of werewolfy yeah moon. Definitely. well i guess i guess that's that you know oh, he yeah no he, he closed the door on me never mind there's exclamation points but there's nothing in his body that says that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, the Washington Post uh, considered his performance a masterpiece and a remarkable piece of work. Who? We got great uh, Barrymore. Oh. We got great reviews for this. Well, I mean, I can imagine. I don't think that they weren't doing much, you know, physically prior to this. I for mean, the time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I can just totally get that. I totally get it. Although when I watched it initially, I was like, he's horrible. <laughs> but I do see the difference, you know. It's just him and everybody else. modern sensibilities, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the film critic Jim McGee said that he missed his calling by not getting to play uh, Dorian Gray and in the uh, portrait of Dorian Gray because that would have been that would be perfect for him. I mean, he looks like what we think of Dorian Gray looking like. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That they, they and they use elements of Dorian Gray here that aren't in the novella. The guy that's suggesting you should go out and try evil. That's yeah. from Dorian Gray, really. Yes. Oh. I love that story of Dorian Gray. I've seen the play a couple of times. I, I like it better than this. I just feel like it's a classic. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, Millicent. Be careful. <laughs> Darling. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. You've done it to me again, Millicent. How dare you? <laughs> I'm ready for you, baby. <laughs> It's your fault, it's your fault here, I'll let you in, hold on a second. Uh, just a second, just a second. Uh, <laughs> I gotta fix my hair. Let <laughs> me get my face on. Uh, hang on. <laughs> Wait a minute. My face and my home. <laughs> hold on, I'm coming more, becoming more fuckable. Give me one moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ring, oh, the oh, ring. Oh, oh, oh. Take, oh, I gotta take the poison. He's an entire chemistry lab, but he needed that ring to get something that would kill him. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thank God for that trash monkey in the bar the other night. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'd do. If I hadn't destroyed that poor woman's life, I wouldn't have been able to poison myself. <laughs> oh. Luckily, it's a slow-acting poison. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's either the film is slowing down right now, or something like that. <laughs> Something. It's like, hey, my sweet. Yeah. Come in. Darling. Are oh. you all right? 
George wore my best hat. Wait, what? I love her startle. I love her startle. That's like the most she's acted in the whole thing. Just like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, this is this is the only scene she actually acts in, I think. You know? Yeah. He looks truly hideous there. Yeah. Yeah, there you are. Oh, oh, oh. The fake teeth are great. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the fact that look at this is, only her hands are acting right now. They're just <laughs> okay, it's all right. It's all right, darling. You just have a bit of uh, I don't know, a little complexion uh, issue at the moment. The back. It's the back. She gave him his back. That's right. That's right. You just slept poorly last night. I, I'm sure everything's all right. <laughs> it's like she can't bear to look, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah. But I just love that she's just going to stand there and take yeah, it. not run away. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, not, not, dear. I'm frozen. forced into this. It's not my fault. Oh, oh wait, a door. No, <laughs> I guess not. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You got me, you got me, you got me. It's almost like it's interesting because it is like it's like a like an insect, the way he's got uh -huh. arms around yeah. her. And it's, like, it's, it's oh. A, oh. What do I do? Do I stay or do I go? Yes, oh, I'm alright. I guess I'm over. Oh, dear, I need some lapels! Some lapels! <laughs> Give me some lapels! I I can't... Oh, forget it. You all suck. I'll take a pole instead. She's right. got a little snack and she could do her own lapels. And be yeah, it's great. I, but I love that yeah. none of them went to go find out. They all just went to go pick her up. It took three of them to do that. Don't worry yeah. about what's going on. Well, the poison at least did its job. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> I love you. <yeah. laughs> Anybody here? Anybody? Oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, this is the killer transformation here. That, that is just, this is my favorite shot. Look at him. I think we should drink again to toast the yeah. trans <laughs> final transformation. Oh, look at that beautiful neck. Mm. He, he is pretty. pretty. He's very pretty. Oh. oh boy, that's just a little crazy. Ooh, it must have been what string. What was in there? <laughs> <laughs> well, then, anyway, in the Ooh. weird, and you're kind of cute. Um, <laughs> so, you got money? <laughs> That's what Jews do on uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. We just all kill ourselves. <laughs> we all took our lives. It's a Day of Atonement. <laughs> hey, there are better ways to atone. Yeah. <laughs> do some good, but Hyde has killed Dr. Jekyll. Make her feel better about it, so she doesn't have to know the truth. Look at her. More eyes. More eyes. Oh. Yeah, she's like, she's like, coming here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have a look. Oh, my handsome man. God, we had such a future together. <laughs> such a shitty future. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Great future together. <laughs> we had so much fun in the past, and now you're gone. What a loss. She said, I was going to make you so miserable. <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to miss those lapels. That's right. <laughs> I just wrote a little ditty on the peony. Anyway, that's all right. <laughs> Dun, da, da. Oh, I love that, all the shots of the bottles behind him. Yep. The end. The end. Lessons learned. Hey, ladies, uh, is it the end? It's the end. Look at my necklace. It says the end. The yeah. end. That's Ooh. right. Where's yours, Beth? Does it Perfect. say the end? <laughs> yeah. It says the end. So and here's to the when traffic we, when we get fully over. We will hopefully be in a live theater someday getting to comment on a film. That's the goal. All right. So, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Here. Great, Great to see it with you later. Bye, Ooh. everybody. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Thank you.